everyone. Today I'm here to answer question few of you ask about my accident and injury. This is not easy for me to share, so please bear with me. This is not usual story. This story is very spiritual. Since I can remember, I believe in God existence, but I kept it deep secret because at school and at home God was not loved, not known and therefore was abused. People were saying things like God can't exist because there are wars and in a second world war the Catholic religion was sanctifying weapons and blessing the world and it is wrong, I understand it is wrong, but unfortunately this is how most people think. They think because bad things are happening, there is no God. At school, they were telling us that there is no God, God is only something for weak people, some grudge to hold on because they can't face the reality. I never believed any of that. I believed there is a God. And nobody could take that from me. It doesn't matter what people said. I grew up in a little village next to the borders, to other country, and the border was just thick path of forest. And I also grew up in dysfunctional family, as most of us, I think. And because God was my big secret, I have nobody to confide in with my belief in God or with my sufferings. I would go and confide in God. I will go in a forest and make sure nobody see me, there is no witness because I need to keep secret that I believe in God because I was in a godless society. And I was just a little kid. I was maybe five, six, seven year old. It started as early as that when I would go in the forest to pray to God and I would first pretend I'm dead. I will like pretend I'm sick and crash on the ground and doing ah and then quiet. And that was for me the test if somebody is in the forest or not. I lie down on the ground for a while when nobody came to me. I got up and then I started to pray. Pray to God and talk to God. I just cried on God's shoulder. I had the nice people in my life, but it wasn't that kind of people that I could confide in. When I was 13 year old, I became depressed. Life for me was losing the meaning because I was not happy at all in my family circle and there was no way out for me and I felt trapped and really down and the consequence of this was that I was losing my fight in God's existence. I started feeling what other people were feeling when they were saying there is no God because if there is a God, those bad things won't happen to me. And in my mind, I said, my God doesn't exist. I stand out the existence of God. And that was my big downfall, that where my depression was born. I understand that God is very unpopular in this world. Often when I mention God, People don't want to talk to me much longer. Or they will talk to me, but they build a big wall. I had 99% negative reaction if I mention God. And that's including religious people. Because I'm not religious. I was never a member of any religion. I just read Bible. But I never even knew there is a Bible when I was 13 years old. That book came to me much later in my life. 
And now I'm talking about my car accident. What had really happened? So it was beautiful summer day, not long to school holidays. And that's something I looked forward to was the summertime. And school holidays were for me always the highlight of the whole year. So at times I may have a bright moment looking for, forward to those things, but otherwise I was pretty down. And this summer day, it was weekend, we went for a day out with my family, mother, father, me, sister, my brother didn't go because he come late home that day. He was punished that way, but I think he would be more punished if he, if he have to go with us because he was only 14 year old, but that's not relevant. Off he went and on the way to our destination, which were few, we stopped in a beautiful lookout place. We stopped under the hill in the serpentines. We woke up the big hill and we made a picnic there. And when I was in my family circle with nobody else around, I never felt at ease. So even I enjoyed the beautiful view of medieval town and the river hugging the town. And I always loved the night shop. But even that view didn't comfort me. So I went for a little stroll. And I come to the group of trees. And as soon as I come to the, those trees, I become pray to God. And I said, God, I'm not sure if you exist. I need to know you exist. Please let me know you exist. God, I want to die today at seven o'clock, and that would be proof of your existence. If I die today at seven o'clock, I know you exist. And it was like I took a bite of my shoulders. As soon as I said what I said while I spoke to God, I forgot everything. It was like all my worries was washed out, and I was just suddenly this happy kid looking forward what's next in a day and picnic blanket. I went back to picnic blanket <clears throat> and soon after we left and I had a really good time. We went to a beautiful place with kids in the night child, all the meadows and forests and some animals were around too. Oh, Kids had fun. On the way home, it was sunset, beautiful sunset. And our car was convertible. And because it was a lovely day, the roof was down, the windows was wind down, and I was sitting in the back. The seat belt didn't exist yet, and I had a hands on the body where the window would be, on the body of the, of the car, I had a hands like this. I have a head like this, and I was watching the beautiful sunset. And all my being was immersed in that beautiful sun. I was truly in a moment, as usually children are. So I'm looking at that beautiful sunset, and suddenly I'm looking up in the sky. I was lying down on a field, later on I land where my waist is. I land on a rock on a field which was already harvested. So it was just bare soil and I landed on that rock and that's where my back crashed. My back crashed when the car, I flew first because I was on the side, leaning with full force of my body on the side. So I flew first, then flew the car with other people in it because they sat properly and car landed on its roof, which wasn't there, which was on the back of the car folded and the car landed 
on me. And it landed on me the way that I have one arm out of the car. There was a body of the car on my torso. One leg out, one arm out. And one leg in a car, one arm in a car. Head outside looking up in the sky. There was a beautiful blue sky with a lot of white clouds. As I'm looking at the sky, I recall what I said. And now, here is the power of our natural self-survival instinct. And that is powerful. Once the human face the death, I believe he doesn't want to die. I met people who survived their own suicide and they said they would never do it again and they regret they done it. We are made to live forever, but I didn't know that then. So I was screaming on the top of my voice so God can can hear me. God, please let me live. And I was repeating this over and over as loud as I can make sure <laughs> that God can hear me. Nobody get injured. Only my mother get hurt because her glasses broke. She had little scratch on her nose from the glasses. Anyway, as I was screaming, my father came to the car, grabbed it, lifted it, threw it over, rescued me. The guy who was by court, guilty of the accident, chuffed off. It was very little traffic altogether in communism. If something was on the road, it was usually company cars and there were only few private car owners, so traffic was scarce. But soon after, my father lifted care of me. And this is, I want to mention this, and that's another power of adrenaline. That power is amazing. If we need, doesn't matter how weak we are, if we need to get the strength, physical strength, we will get it. That's the power. That's that mental power and adrenaline power. People stopped soon after that and they just carry me in a sitting position in a car. They sat me down in a car and off we went to hospital, the nearest hospital. And as we sat in a car, I touched my legs and I felt nothing, nothing. And that freaked me out. I was in shock and I was saying, I don't feel my legs, I don't feel nothing. Now I feel it when I touch them, but before it was like, if I touch this pillow, this same thing, no sensation whatsoever. But nobody was responding to what I was saying, so I went quiet and in the hospital they took me to the x-ray, they said right away she has to go for operation. They called the ambulance. I went to nearest hospital, a much bigger hospital. And by the law of physics, by the law of what we know about spinal injuries, I should be dead by then because nobody from adults have first aid course. Nobody knew how to treat me. And that's okay, that's just how it was. And I think first aid education should be compulsory. So yeah, we were going in an ambulance. I was terrified of doctors. I used to find when we go with the, our class in a school to doctors, I could not stand that environment. And 
till today I can't stand that environment and I was so afraid and I confined in a nurse how afraid I am and she was a really lovely angel and she told me things to calm me down and she was really successful with that and we just ended up shutting away before we know it we were in our destination it took us about two hours about even it wasn't far but the road was in a really bad condition in those days but the god sent me the best neurosurgeon in the czech republic he is over 90 years now last time i checked he lived his name is professor dr zdenek Mraček from Plzeň. Thank you for saving my life along with the God. I'm sure he was God sent to me to save my life. I went to operation table. The, the room was very impressive, was all green and there was a huge clock there and therefore I remember it was nine o'clock. Two hours after accident I was finally on the operation table I woke up in the morning, the sun was already up because my bed was next to a big window and we were upstairs of the building and all I could see was the sky. I have a sky view and then some top of trees. It was beautiful. As long as I can see out of the window and there is a nature or sky, I am happy. I have my living picture forever changing. And so the operation was complicated, the operation was long, and before the opera operation started, my parents were told to prepare that most likely I will not survive it, and if I do, I will be very lucky to sit up. I lived, and I'm sitting up, Two years after my accident, I began to learn how to walk. But this is enough for now. I'm sure I skipped a few things. They will come back to me, I'll mention them in another part. This is a long story. This is part one. I should say that on the beginning. And I want to mention one more thing before I fully stop. And I'm going back to God. I know that my God is not very popular, but I politely ask you, please respect my God. I respect yours, and that's all I need from you. Because I want you to know, if you disrespect my God, the essence of my life, I can't hide anywhere. It hurts, and that's okay, that's my problem. Imagine your mother, Oh, Father, somebody really hurting your children, telling them you don't have a parents, you on your own, nobody give a damn about you, how that would feel for you, especially if you're a very good parent. Think about it. And I love you, and please don't forget, we all have love in our heart, and that's the most important thing we have. If you don't have love in your heart, you have it there, but if you don't cultivate it, you are a very poor person. All we need is love. Bye.